Hello, 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 and it's Jasper back again with another vlog. And today we've got a new adventure. We're going to check out some of the wonderful hives kept by my uncles. You can see these hives behind me, and that's what we're going to be getting into today. We're going to go and have a look, see if we've got some honey in there. Hopefully, there's lots of honey, and then we'll give you the full experience going into the hives and tomorrow we'll be spinning them all out. So come along with me today and see what we get up to. Okay, so today basically what we have is we have all of these hives here that they all need to be checked for honey. So we have a combination of normal hives and then the bigger hives you can see with two levels and those are called supers. So the supers are what we're gonna be looking into. That's where all of the honey is and hopefully Fingers crossed, we'll have lots of honey for us today. So we've got seven or eight different supers to look into and all being well, there should be lots and lots of honey if the bees have done their work. But of course, before we get anywhere near those hives and start rattling them up to look at their honey, we need to make sure we're protected. Pete and I donned our long trousers and heavy shirt before pulling on a full body nylon bee suit. Today, we are dealing with African bees which are often colloquially known as killer bees because they tend to be much more aggressive than other varieties of honeybees and as I soon found out, are willing to go to extraordinary lengths to protect their hives. All right, all kitted up. Hopefully, no stings today. Honey is essential to the survival of bees because without it, they are unable to carry out the laborious work that takes place inside the hive. Honey is made from nectar, which is the slightly sweet substance produced by flowers. Honeybees will gather this nectar from plants and mix it with their saliva, which contains a special enzyme. This mixing of the enzyme with the nectar causes a chemical reaction that breaks down the sugar in the nectar into fructose and glucose. This is now the start of honey. But in this form, the mixture has a very high water content. So only once the mixture has been dehydrated by the bees to less than 20% water content is it considered ripened honey. Oh, we're over 50% there. What Peter's looking for here is to see if the individual cells have been capped by the bees, which indicates that the honey is mature and ready to be harvested. One can check if the frames have been capped by looking at the cells to check if they are sealed by a thin layer of wax. If the majority of the cells are capped in this way, then it suggests that there is a good amount of honey in the frame and it is ready to be collected. Here, you can see Pete blowing out the bees from a super that is ready to be collected. Having blown out as many bees as possible, the heavy super is carried back to the car to be taken back home. Okay, well, we're back home. The supers are in the room. We're gonna leave those overnight and then we'll spin them out tomorrow. What stings on my hands? Thing on my face otherwise not too bad semi successful turns out there's a lot more work that goes into harvesting honey than I anticipated not only is it physical work but it's also quite painful I got stung by a bee last night we went out to the hive site where we had a few hives to look into and see if we had got any honey. Thankfully, there was three full supers of honey. So the three big hives that had quite a lot of honey in. So we were able to collect those and bring them back home. So now that we've got those hives, we've got the frames, we've got the honey, we need to now extract that honey from the frames. So I'm gonna take you into the workshop now. There you go, Jazz. We've got one big frame here that is fully capped. It's such a glorious sight to see honey dripping down. You know you're in for a treat just now. Called decapping where once the honey is ripe, 
the bees cap it with another thin layer of wax. And so we've got to take that thin layer of wax before we then put it into the spinner. And the spinner is what then spins out the honey from the individual cells. People try and do everything as sustainably as possible and that of course means not wasting anything. And so all of these caps get melted down in his solar melter which then turns it into this. So this is a block of beeswax which then can be a, go on to be used for candles or other things such as moustache wax and you might have had a guess at who makes use of that. All right, so you've decapped the comb and now what are you doing? Put it in the spinner. And here we got 12 frames in the spinner and it's going to spin round and round, first fairly slowly and then over time it will get faster and faster. And then out of the bottom of that, through that little tap there, we're going to get more honey. Here we go. Magic comes. Mmm, so good. So we finished out spinning the honey, and now we have these combs, but now there's no honey in them. So it's important that we leave the comb like this intact so that when the bees come back to make more honey, they don't have to rebuild the comb all over again. We've got the honey now. It's come out of the spinner, into the jar. Now onto the final step, which is bottling. So we're gonna head over into the kitchen. So there you have it, the whole process from hive to honey. Now through this video I've found that I have a much, much greater appreciation not only for the amazing little insects that can turn something like this into something like this, but also to the beekeepers themselves who through largely a labor of love are able to manage these potentially dangerous little insects in order to provide us with this amazing liquid. So I hope that you now can see how much work and effort goes into making this honey on both the side of the bees but also the sides of the beekeepers. Both parts are crucial to ensuring that we can get our honey and that we can maintain positive hives and colonies of bees. With that I'm going to wrap the video up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned more about bees and you can go out there and support your beekeepers and local honey producers. Stay happy, stay healthy, and most of all, stay sweet.